Hello, we're now going to talk about another two types of visual forms of notation called data flow diagrams and information flow diagrams. Two very similar things with a subtly different meaning. And they are different to flowcharts. So despite being flow diagrams versus flowcharts, they are different things to learn. So please be careful. Now, a data flow diagram, first of all, often shortened to just a DFD, they're there to show you how the data is used within a process or system. And really showing how the data moves about within that process or system. So the word flow suggests things are moving around. And there are some common symbols used. Unlike flowcharts, these are less agreed. So you might see different symbols. You might use different symbols to the ones I'm showing. I'm showing the most common, but be aware they can switch around a little bit. This is not quite as formal as some other forms of notation. So most commonly, I've seen a rectangle used to represent either a process or a system. So really, what is actually using the data? That could be a program, it could be a person, it could be a physical thing. A oval is used to represent an entity. An entity is really anything which is providing the data or receiving the data. Often this is a human, it could be an organization as well. So who is giving the data, who is getting the data at the end of this process. And a rectangle with one vertical line to the left is sometimes used to represent a data store. So where the data is being held most commonly in a database. So process using the data, entity giving or receiving the data and a data store is where things are being held for a period of time. So let's look at an example. And this first example is what is sometimes described as a level zero DFD, also called a top level DFD. And I'll, I'll say more about what that means in a few minutes time. But this is a diagram of a backup system, just one I've imagined myself. So we might have an IT technician who might be the person actually managing this backup system. And so you'd put them in an oval because they are an entity providing and receiving data. You might have the cloud storage system, which might be a company like Google or Apple or Microsoft. And you might have say your data being stored somewhere and you might have a backup of that data being stored somewhere else. So how would these interact together? Well, you would draw arrows between them, which have a direction showing the direction the data is going to flow in. And often I think it's a good idea to annotate these arrows saying what is going on at that particular stage. So first of all, the technician might request a backup from the cloud storage provider. The cloud storage provider might specify what files to copy. It might interact with that database and ask it for the number of files. That database might give back the copied files. These are all data getting moved around, of course. Then the cloud storage might actually ask the backup database to write these files. And then finally, it might respond back to the technician confirming all of this is done. Now, when you see the final diagram, it looks a tiny bit confusing, um, but hopefully you can see how the data is moving around. It's not a bad idea to add numbers to this. You know, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, if you feel it's gonna be hard to interpret but hopefully you can see that's how the data might move around in this system. I said that was a level zero DFD, but let's say we're looking now at a level one DFD. This is all about the level of detail. Level zero is quite high level, it's quite an overview of the system. Level one gets more detailed. Level two would get even more detailed still, level three and so on. But in reality, usually you only have a level zero or level one. DFD. So if you are asked to draw a level zero DFD, you can be a little bit more general. A level one DFD should have a bit more detail. So same idea again, this time I might separate the cloud storage into several components. I might also add in a security checker. This could be a person, it could be a another system which actually manages the security of the web storage, say. So in this more detailed example, again, the technician might request a backup, but this time there might be an extra step where the credentials of the technician are checked. 
so it authenticates the technician is who they say they are. The result comes back and the web app might request via a request handler, which could be a separate program running. Then might find the files stored in another data store. You might have the different clients of this web storage held somewhere else. This might give back the list of files. It might then specify the files to copy and this same process is similar to what I had before. Uh, and finally it confirms. Right, so much more complicated, a lot more going on. That's why it's a level one DFD and not a level zero DFD. In terms of what you need to know, you need to know roughly what the symbols mean. You need to be able to interpret something like this. Now whether you'd get as complicated a diagram as this, I'm not quite sure. You'd hopefully get a bit of a description of it beforehand. But you might have to interpret aspects of it. You know, for example, what does this symbol mean? Um, where does data move between the security checker and the cloud web app, for example? Now, just going back to, got to go back loads of uh, steps here. Just going back to the level zero one, I had only one process box, whereas in level one, I had um, two process boxes. So that's generally how it goes. As you are increasing through the levels, you add more and more process boxes. But like I say, in practice, you only really ever have level zero or level one DFDs. So let's talk about information flow diagrams quickly, which are different, okay? Now, the difference between data and information is subtle. So information is data with some meaning, such as when you process the data. So data is just raw facts. Information has some context, has some meaning. So IFDs, information flow diagrams, generally just show information exchange between entities. Generally, will not have any processing going on because information has been processed already. So thankfully, these are often a bit more simple because they show how things are managed, typically. So maybe for the same backup example, you might just see how it's managed across an organization. Let's say you've got a software engineer managing a project. They might ask the IT manager who's going to instruct the IT technician. So how information might flow between them, let's say the software engineer requests a backup to the IT manager. The IT manager might delegate it to the IT technician, but maybe will add it's needed by a particular date or time. The technician will then go through that whole process I just showed you, but then afterwards confirm to the manager that it's been completed, and maybe the manager will report back that it's been completed on the date specified. So these are generally quite high level, a bit of an overview, but we don't generally have any processes because information has been processed already. Now just before I finish on the symbols, please don't get thrown if you see different symbols. You've got to look at this diagram and try to understand what's going on, and it should be clear enough that you can. So if you see rectangles used instead of ovals, if you see little stick figures instead of people or instead of ovals, please don't get too confused. These can vary quite a lot. Just make sure you are clear on the difference between a DFD and an IFD. An IFD generally won't have any processing. It's just about information flowing, not for raw data.